Hey there, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. and I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. This is what it used to look like. Uh, this is, uh, let's see what issue, March 2021. I've got Mattel Brothers. Uh, they're a, uh, an Indian uh, grocery chain. Uh, this was a great looking issue. Let's see how big this one. This was 152 pages. Just tons of stuff in there. And uh, let's see, see what I was doing. Oh, man, I was sweating. I was doing a thing for University of Denver where I went, and uh, we were doing a Habitat for Humanity downtown Atlanta, and I was, uh, I was, uh, had the wheelbarrow of mulch, and uh, we were fixing this, uh, like, uh, garden area in, in not the greatest area of Atlanta, uh, but uh, we were doing some uh, local neighborhood cleanup, and uh, it was a great day, and uh, I was sweating my tail off. Boy, it was hot and humid there. Just, just, and it, and it's really been really nice here in the south, but it gets uh, really hot, so I was sweating that day. Anyway, always nice to hold a magazine. We're digital now, but uh, it's always nice to you know to see what I was doing. And actually, I had a little more hair there, and it wasn't as gray. And that was only a couple of years ago. Woo! Unbelievable. So, anyway, it's TGIF today. Hopefully, everybody's had a great week, ending your a week on a positive note, going into the weekend, recharge your battery, clear your mind of all that negativity, whatever was hanging in there, and getting ready for the do it all over again on Monday morning, bright and early. And uh, don't and always remember, man, recharge your battery this weekend. So, uh, got my DU got my DU colors on. Uh, we're playing Marquette tonight. I'm gonna be watching it on the tube. Uh, last game of the season. We've already won the Big East, uh, but we got a win tonight, so we're seeded number one and uh, tournament next weekend. We win the the league, auto bid for the Big Dance. If we don't win, number four in the country, probably uh, get the invite. But in my book, you want to win the league championship, so you just get the auto bid, so you don't have to worry about it. You know, and you don't want to be on the bubble or you know seeing how the committee if they're going to let you in. You know, like March Madness, uh, we our hockey team we just won the national championship a couple of weekends ago and uh uh very very excited it was our 10th one we're the only school in uh d1 uh sports that have won 10 national championships and uh, my banner there is getting old I, I think i'm missing three on there so it's time to get a new banner and update it but uh way to go pies and i'll be pulling for you tonight my wife knows i'm gonna be yelling at my laptop here at about uh, i think it's 7 p.m they're playing underneath the lights at peter barton stadium so i'll be watching it on pio vision and she knows that uh i'll be screaming and she always says to me you know they can't hear you and i know i go i know but they can feel me i'm here you know i got my lax stick behind me so i'm a hockey lax guy and uh and a proud du alum so go piles let's get that win tonight all right come on boys you can do it so today i've, I've I've got I've saved the best for last and uh, uh, to end my week off uh, and, and, you know, with a great show, I've got a gentleman and uh, kind of just exchanged some emails on LinkedIn, went back and forth and meet Mr. Tyler Cerny. And he's down in Orlando. He just checked into his hotel. So uh, uh, and uh, he's a TEDx speaker, one of the, you know, one of the top ones out there. He's an author, coach. He's a jack of all trades. He's done all sorts of stuff. So, Tyler. Say hello to our listeners out there at Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. Hey, what's up, guys? Yes, we're here at Coffee Talk. And I got my coffee here, which is awesome. I'm checked in to my hotel here in Orlando because I'm originally from Cleveland. I'm super prideful of where I come from, just like you, David, which is awesome. Awesome to see. And the Cavs are actually playing in Orlando in game four tonight, and I can actually see the stadium from my hotel. So that's why we're here. My wife and I were actually living in Clearwater Beach, Florida. And so, um, just so super excited to be here. And like you said, yeah, man, uh, I'm a full-time spe uh, keynote speaker. We've been blessed to have over 2.5 million views on the TEDx talk. And we're in the top 500 TEDx talks watched of all time out of about 210,000 plus talks and videos. So again, super blessed by the grace of God, we are in there. Um, a lot of people have seen it. It's about how to find your life's purpose. But if you guys haven't watched it, haven't checked it out, um, you guys can just type in Tyler Cerny TEDx. And if you guys are in the commercial industry and developing a personal brand, TEDx is one of the best ways to do that as well. Um, and I've also done some consulting with a lot of cool projects, but I'm excited to dive into it, answer some questions, have some fun, and drink some coffee, get caffeinated for the weekend. Yeah. So Clearwater, you, you made the ride over on I-4, right? I mean, basically just a jump, hop, skip, and a jump, and uh, you're in, uh, in Orlando. Not, uh, not that far of a ride, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, it's funny, you know, about 
I, I played college football and sports for my whole life. So I, I grew up in Cleveland. The biggest alum that we had was Don Shula. If, you, if any football fans out there know the undefeated Dolphins, right? We are Still undefeated, co- too. Still <laughs> undefeated. Right. right. Yeah, uh, yeah. rest in peace, Don Shula. But our, our stadium was called Don Shula Stadium. He would show up to our stadium. He had all the bling on with his, his championship rings. And he was such a legend, so much wisdom and knowledge that we learned from him. Uh, it was a smaller Division three school. We then, I then got a chance to play basketball overseas in China. I lived in Asia for three years and just loved it, man. I, I was in Beijing, uh, Bali, Vietnam, Thailand, you know, I traveled a lot over there. And when I was over there, I Googled how to make money online. And this is when obviously I got hit with all these ads from Google uh, and that kind of pushed me into the online marketing space. That was about 10 years ago. And then since then, it's been an incredible journey. I basically started off reaching out to online business owners, uh, personal brands, agencies that wanted to grow and scale their companies. I said, hey, would you mind if I promote your company and your product? And they said, absolutely. We don't, we, we would love to have you do that. So they would give me like a referral for every customer that I closed. And there was this one company that I worked with and we got, I think I, we had onboarded about 40 new clients within a 30 day period for an agency. And it was a, it was a, agency and they had four founders and they're like Tyler you know you made more money than all four of the founders combined in this organization so then they flew me out to basically learn the whole process I developed once they learned it they then got rid of me so that's how I got introduced to the business world and I learned really quickly that you know if you develop these skill sets you got to know how to have legal agreements and structures in place and then that led me to consulting with a live event company, one of the largest personal development companies in the world in Southern California. Because when I was in Asia, I was like, hey, where's the sunshine at? I'm either going to California or Florida. I'm not going back to Ohio. Moved to California. Um, It so happened to be one of the companies I consulted for too, was based out of Carlsbad. And one of the main guys, one of my mentors, Tony Robbins, has one of his headquarters uh, headquarters there too, um, right at right inside Carlsbad, north of San Diego, and so yeah, north did a San lot Diego, of cool- down in, yeah, up to up to five. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then uh, I had a lot of buddies that were in the Marines too, so Camp Pendleton. So shout yeah. out to all the guys over there too. And then you know, got a chance to work with a lot of people in the personal development space. Uh, learned how much money you could make in the live event business, so I started my own live event business. Uh, I ended up meeting my wife there. Um, you know, I know when we were talking beforehand. How I ended up in Florida, well, about three or four years ago, that big situation happened, right? And I was like, everything shut down. And then I I was looking at my phone and I, I saw Florida it didn't exist in Florida. Everything was open. You could go to the beach, you know, the restaurants are open. So I'm like, you know what? It's sunny. It's got the water. Let me move over there. And then I, I've never left Florida since. So it's been about three or four years. So um, and then since then too, like we've given a TEDx talk, it went viral, had a lot of success. We, you know, we help people get on the TEDx stage. We help people develop personal brands. That's one of many ways to do so. And we help build companies and scale brands through sales and marketing strategies as well. You know, uh, getting back to your basketball time, you, were you a forward? Is that what you were, a shooting guard? What were you? I know you weren't well, a center. Come on, well, well, in maybe, the, maybe in China, well, I don't know, but you know. Well, yeah, great question. Well, in America, I'm a, I'm about six two. So in America, okay. if I play against really good players, I'm a point guard or a shooting guard, right? In China, I'm more of a three, four, and potentially even a five on some teams. And so it was pretty funny because it there Americans are just built different, man. You know, you go you go over to China, they get a plate of food, it's it's rice, and they give you a little bit of meat. We're like you come to America and you're getting all this food, right? It's like you get so much food. Everyone's just so much bigger. And, you know, you, you hear people coming over from like Europe that live in the States. They get all sick because we inject our food with all these things. They, our, our food, we can get it in like 30 seconds. And it's like so quick and instantaneous, microwavable food. I mean, America is just different. The weight systems are just different. The The infrastructure, all that stuff. So I was like, you know. I was built like a big man out there and it, it was hard to stop me just because of the size difference. But again, I'm only six two. I'm a solid player here, but I dominated in China for sure. Were you playing uh when uh who was the guy from the Knicks that uh Oh Stefan Marbury. Yeah, yeah Marbury. Marbury, yeah, thank you. I was having a brain part there. I couldn't remember because I you know, I remember he went over to China and they have the they everybody just uh you know admired him and they got the statue outside one of the stadiums and He's selling his sneakers and 
now. So. Yeah, it, it was uh, Stefan Marbury and Jimmer Fredette. If you remember Jimmer Fredette from BYU, he uh, mm-hmm. those are like the two main guys. It, Stephon Marbury, he played for the Shanghai Ducks, and uh, yeah, he was like the Michael Jordan out there. Again, he oh, was yeah. a, he yeah. was an All Star in the league in the NBA, solid player. He wore his Starberries, which were fifteen dollars shoes that they sold at Kmart. He ended up like rolling his ankle, like busting his ankle because again, they're only fifteen dollars, and he was like, okay. I can't compete at the same level. Where can I go? He went to China and absolutely dominated. And, you know, yeah, he, he I, I would see him out. You know, the, the league he was in, he was like the professional Chinese league. I was in like a league underneath that. So there's like different tiers. Like, like I was triple, like my, triple my, A baseball. You know, you yeah, were it was like semi professional, right? And my, my league, it was all Chinese, but you were able to have two international players. And so basically what they did was there was an open, open court tryout where it's like, hey, Anyone that doesn't, it isn't from China. All the teams showed up from this league. And that day I just couldn't miss a shot. I was making all my shots. I had like four or five teams come up to me. They took me out. They bought me all this Nike gear and they're like trying to recruit me to their team. And uh, I mean, it was just a lot of fun, man. And it, it, it's a lifestyle because a lot, a lot of guys, they do that. You know, if, if you're a single guy, they take care of your food and your housing and all your immediate needs are taken care of and you can play basketball till you know, your, your knees fall off, you know, until your knees don't work no more until you're what you're 35, 40 years old. And for me, again, it was awesome. I was so grateful for it, but I was like, you know what? I want to make like, I want to make more money than this. So that's kind of what pushed me into doing a little bit more research online and stuff like that. And that was before like digital nomad things were even, it's a lot more popular now where a lot of people don't even own. They just kind of Airbnb go to a lot of different places. Well, yeah, that was back in what, like 2016, 2017 when I was over there. So almost like seven years ago that I was mm-hmm. living in Asia as an expat. And that community was growing as well, which which was cool, man. You meet a lot of cool people and travel changed my life. I, I went over to China. Uh, have you ever been to China, David? Or heard no, about I've China? been to a lot of places. I've not been to China. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting place, man. I mean, you know, you go to the public bathrooms, the, ba- the public bathrooms, they don't have uh, doors on the stalls. So you're going in there just trying to go to the bathroom and people are just doing their thing. They make direct eye contact with you. And I'm like, okay, this is unique. And then you realize that there's no toilets. There's only one toilet. And right when you walk in there, it's the toilet to the left and it's labeled, it's in Chinese, but then there's English and it's like for special people in quote quotations. And then everything else is called a hole in the ground. It's called squatters. They're called squatters because it's just a hole in the ground. And it's like, I go in there and I'm like, okay, well, I think I'm going to use this toilet. So I, I use the toilet and people are making direct eye contact me walking in and they think I'm special using this. And so that's just one of many examples of like, that's the way of life out there, right? Like it, it, if, you know, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, there's some people that I grew up in that haven't even left Cleveland, Ohio. There's some people that lived in China, grew up in China, live in China, and that's what they know to be true. You know, there are some days too, where you could look at the sun and there was a, a gloss over it that that there's a thing called the AQI, the air quality index. Oh yeah. St- no. Yeah. It, it was really, it was really bad. Right. So, you know, see, they would report it. They, you know, it is a communistic country. They, they would report it around 600 AQI to give a perspective in LA is like the worst parts in the state, which again, is not bad, but ranges anywhere from 150 to 300. They reported 600. Well, CNN, BBC, a lot of different news channels, they reported it actually was code red. 1300 plus AQI. Obviously, China is not going to report that because that's like really bad. But they even said when I was over there, you're better off smoking a cigarette because at least the air was through a filter versus than breathing the outside air. And yeah. you could go into a, a building like this or your hotel, wherever you were staying at, and then the hallways was just this smog and this pollution, oh, yeah. you know. And it just went on and on, man. But, you know, the, the people there were awesome. Like, so I always tell people, the, the the culture is so rich out there, man. The food is amazing. I miss the food. Uh, the we have Chinese food, quote unquote, in America. Hand Express. Uh, sure. It's that's it's Americanized. It's a lot sweeter, and again, injected with all the stuff. Like it, it, the food is a lot more cleaner. You don't feel like crap after you eat it. Um, I mean, I, I miss the food over there. You can get a full plate for like eighteen yuan, which is like six to seven yuan to a dollar. So it's like. Two fifty-three dollars for this huge plate of food. So the cost of living is incredible, and that's another thing where a lot, a lot of those guys they go over there, they treat you like royalty, they treat you like kings, like you know Stefan Marbury and stuff. Like, yeah, man, China I, you know, was definitely an experience. 
Well, I bring up Stefan is uh, I, I saw him. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, an ESPN profile or 30 on whatever, but I saw his story. I wrote my publisher's column on him because he didn't want to he wanted uh, youth in the urban neighborhoods or, you know, just in general, no matter what color you were. He wanted to make sure that his sneakers were affordable versus trying to make three or four hundred dollars. Nothing against Michael Jordan. OK, Mike, if you're watching, I'm nothing against you, but. He wanted his sneakers to be affordable and he took, he went, you know, he kind of had the Walmart mentality. I want to make my stuff. I want to make them affordable and I want to make a lot of sales of them. So that whole thing, giving back to the community. And then he went over to China and played and I just thought it was really good. So I forget when I wrote that, that column, but it was, uh, you know, the athlete me, uh, it's not always about the money. It's about, you know, what, what you do with it and how you go about, you know, promoting yourself and your brand. And I just thought it was a really good story. So I wrote my, my column on it. And, uh, and with pollution, look, I was in Denver during the winter in Denver, Colorado, we would have this thing called inversion where, you know, the hot and cold air and there'd be, you fly into Denver, man, there was a layer of smog during the, during, well, you can see it during, you know, any big city in the, in the States, but especially during the winter, you would, you would see that, that smog in there. And I remember watching the China Olympics, the winter Olympics, uh, you know, there, they had the ski jump right in front of the atomic energy plants. And then, you know, they showed the, uh, you know, the air quality and the guys running the mirror, you know, it, you know, so all that stuff as an athlete, people that are at, they don't, they don't understand that, you know, if you're breathing and so forth, it can affect your performance. And uh, so, you know, all those things, uh, but listen, we hooked up on LinkedIn, you know, that's if not on LinkedIn out there, you got to get on there. If you're watching this, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, if you want to get into business, do business. This is where Tyler met me. He reached out to me, didn't know me. We, we exchanged a couple messages and here he is. So, uh, you know, it's all about throwing stuff out there and, uh, you know, connecting. Uh, just a little about my, my wife's from uh, uh, Canton, Ohio. And uh, nice. The, yeah. the NFL Hall of Fame. Yeah. Well, Football I went. So I, so my brother-in-law played for Mount Union and, uh, he's, uh, he got recruited, uh, he was a wide receiver and now he has one of, uh, donated some money. He's uh, still the wide receiver coach for Mount Union. And, uh, I don't, I don't know where, which high school she went to Hoover or that was the big rival. And anyway, we went up for a uh, hall of fame weekend, uh, a couple years back and it was awesome. We went to the dinner and, uh, you know, we went to the game and, uh, but we don't go up there during the winter. You know, you go up there during the summer. For sure. And you know, that's, that's awesome. And the flats, you know, there's nothing like it. They've done a great job redeveloping it. Sorry, Orlando, uh, you know, just, you know, pounded on uh, the Cavs last night. But you know what? Right. Game, you know, game four is good. You know, that you got, you know, listen, whoever wins that is, you know, has momentum. If Orlando doesn't win it, they're going back to Cleveland. They're probably going to close those guys out. So, right. Uh, you yeah, know. you know, it's funny that you say Mount Union because, yeah, so I went to John Carroll University, and so they were in the same division. And John Carroll, they would always go 8-2, and 9-1, and one, and they would always play Mount Union at the end of the year, and they would always use the Mount Union. And Mount Union had one of the longest college football streaks, or, like, one of the longest winning streaks of all time in the regular season all across, like, I think any football team, um, they just, like, it was, we always played them, and we would always lose. It was like we, 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 there was years when I was there. Uh, that we had more talent, but it was just a mental thing. We would just always lose to Mount Union. It was always like, hey, we're going to beat them this year. We're going to beat them. We would lose. It wasn't until my senior year that we beat Mount Union. We, 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 broke, we broke their winning streak, right? We finally won one game, and, you know, it, we made it to ESPN and stuff because, again, they, they, most Division three teams, or actually most Cleveland sports teams don't get recognition usually from ESPN regardless, even when we did have LeBron. But that made recognition, that made ESPN, that made Sports Center of, hey, this winning streak continued from a Division three school. It's not that common for a team to win this much, but Mount Union was always had that, and they had NFL guys go. Um, but my senior year, we beat them, and so that was kind of our claim to fame, and we got the OAC championship and stuff. But, yeah, Mount Union is definitely a powerhouse for sure. You know, I, I, you know when I went when I went to the hall, I'd never been there before, and I thought it was just going to be a dinky little thing. But now, it, you know, you get in there, and there's all, and now they built it up a little more, and you know, they have the stadium there. But uh, it, it's not a tiny little thing. It's it's very, you, you know, if you, if you if it's on your bucket list, go check it out. Winter or during the summer, but 
if you ever get a chance to go to the dinner and you, then the game, you know, it, it's it's a very cool thing to do, and uh, you'll you'll thoroughly enjoy it. And uh, whether you're a sports guy or not, I mean, it's just a cool thing, you know. So, um, well, let's uh let's talk about the last four years or so. You know, uh, we've all been on this roller coaster. We're kind of out of the tunnel. There's still a couple of speed bumps and hints, potholes that you know we're all going through. And uh, you know, um, talk about how you kind of you know any lessons learned that our listeners out there, commercial construction coffee talk. You know, you being on the road, being a speaker, and all that, you see a lot of people, and you you get kind of the vibe of where everybody is. Talk about what you saw out there, and you know how people you know weathered the storm per se. Sure. Yeah, I mean during I mean during that period of time, right? Um, that was actually one of the, the best years I had in my business financially, and co- consulting with a lot of different companies, specifically consulting with the largest personal development live event company in the world. Well, live events they didn't exist anymore, right? So I had to completely pivot um, where a lot of the business that we had, we would go to city to city to city, and as a speaker, I mean that's your business, right? And so. You know, you have to pivot and you really have to focus in on like, you know, it's a great it's it's a great question and situation to really think about. Like, you know, let's say something like that does happen again or what could deter you? What are the weak spots within your business? Well, what if we can't meet in person anymore? Can we still run a business virtually? And, you know, some companies were able to transition just to virtual events and they had some great success with it. But again, that was kind of the select few. Most people, they, those businesses had to pivot completely. And so again, it's just realigning, pivoting, figuring out the skill sets. And one of the skill sets I know you mentioned too, LinkedIn, like there's a book, if you guys haven't got a chance to read it, it's called Predictable Revenue, one of my favorite books. And all the, a lot of the stuff that I learned and implemented throughout my career was from that book. And it's basically a guy by the name of Aaron Ross, which I got connected with on LinkedIn as well. Um, he basically grew this SaaS company up like $100 million worth. And his whole thing was outbound sales system. So he would leverage email. He would le- leverage uh, cold calling. He would leverage LinkedIn, social media outreach. He would leverage all these outbound methods to grow and develop companies. So that was one of the skill sets that I had was to build and develop these marketing and sales systems, not only for my, my business now, but also for all the other businesses and organizations that I work with too. And so during that period and during any type of period, or maybe someone's in a situation where they're looking to make more money or they're looking to get to that next level, one of the things that I've learned over the last three or four years is like, where is the money going? Because during that period, you know, the stimulus checks of $800 or whatever the case may be, we're going out to these people, there was a statistic, and I have to pull it up, but basically 90, 95%, if not 100% of that money that was went out to people ended up back in the hands of wealthy individuals, right? So it's like most people think they have a money problem. It's not a money problem. And that's clearly the case that where, hey, I'm giving you money. Where the like, hey, this is going to be the solution. No, where that money, they end up spending it on, oh, like I got 800 more bucks. I'm going to go take a vacation with this now. Or, hey, I'm going to, you know, spend it on something that's a liability. It's not going to create and produce me money. So it's like looking at things where what can I do now to develop more income for myself? And number one is how can I develop a skill set or how can I um, be a part of assets that are going to produce cash flow for me? And for myself, one of the best ways to do that was always private equity businesses of what are businesses that are making money? Because there were businesses that expanded and grew during that time. And finding those businesses, then looking at, okay, what do they need help with? Because all major successful corporations and brands, they're looking for great talent, they're looking for great people, and they all have problems. So what can I do with my experience, my skill sets? How can I be of value to them and then deliver that service to them? And then through that, depending on the problem that I'm solving for them is going to dictate and determine the amount of money that I can make for them. And a great example is, you know, this, like uh, this agency I worked with during that time too, you know, if their services are, let's say $5,000 a month and they charge three month minimum, so it's $15,000. Well, what if I can get you 10 new clients? Well, that's what $150,000 worth of new revenue directly to your bottom line. How much would you be willing to pay me? Well, that's a great question. Most companies typically, depending on the industry, 
will pay anywhere from 10 to 15% to their sales guys. You know, find out that baseline or your salespeople, find out that baseline for that company or organization. And I, I found that out and then I was like, hey, well, you're not paying me a salary. You're not giving me any leads. I'm generating the leads and closing the deals. So I would negotiate anywhere from 25 to 40% of the deal, which then led into equity. And again, if you're able to generate new business, more leads, more sales for any type of an organization, that's one of the best skill sets that you can develop. Number one is just sales and marketing, number one. And then the other skill set that I then learned beyond that over the last, you know, my whole life, but really started, you know, running in my stride over the last two and a half, three years was your personal brand. And you need to have a personal brand because whatever it is that you end up doing in this lifetime, do people trust you? Do they, do they, are they going to, you know, I, I, how do you carry yourself? You know, when you, when you show up on interviews like this, what do you, what do you dress like? How, how do you communicate? All these different things contribute to your brand. And so if you have a brand that people like, that people trust, that people can align with, then people are going to start to like you. And then what, what starts to happen, you start to build relationships. And that's what business is all about is building lifelong relationships with people. And then, the business side is just the logistics of like, hey, what are your problems? Can I provide a solution? And if I can't, well, let me connect you with my man David over here who could probably provide a solution for you. And then at that point, you know, I'm building relationships. I'm solving problems. I may be even getting paid for that. If I'm not, whatever, I'm still developing relationships and that's still going to come back to me. And so, you know, for me over the last three or four years, I really doubled down on, you know, what are the skill sets that are going to be absolutely necessary? skill sets communication whether it's sales uh marketing with your, your business uh communication with one another's communication on stage communication with interpersonal relationships match that skill set and personal branding you have those two skill sets you're going to be extremely valuable in the marketplace and so that's what i learned over the last three or four years is that if you have those two things dialed in and locked in you can still make money regardless of the economy regardless of what happens regardless of what's open what's not open Hey, listen, uh, when uh, I've been a publisher for 24 years and uh, when, uh, you know, March 2020, when uh, they canceled March Madness, I was actually going to that weekend, I uh, was uh, going to see DU play OSU and lacrosse in the horseshoe in Ohio and Columbus, and they canceled everything. And then uh, a couple of weeks went by and then everybody, you know, months and now, but I was a, in, I was a print face-to-face -face guy. I had my biggest event I did in Jacksonville uh, that January. I had the most people I ever attended. Uh, we did a cocktail party every month around the country to get our subscribers together. I used to run like in a people section of my magazine. And uh, my first one I did in Coconut Grove and, uh, and then March came and then it was very, very scary. And I was fighting with my printer. I was like, well, half, my, half the offices, I'm gonna, they're all, everybody's closed. I'm gonna print these magazines. They're gonna get thrown in the trash. You know, and they're like, you've been a publisher forever. You understand when the press is at, you know, and uh, so I bit the bullet. We were by month. I did six issues a year. And uh, normally I would have my event and I would send out contracts and try to get them to put deposits down for my following year. But once again, uh, everything was like kind of just, you know, frozen in a big block of ice. And uh, so I put that March, April issue out and then I sat back and I would get up like in the middle of the night. My wife would be like, where are you going? I'm like, I got to think. And uh, so my editor and my artist were like, let's go digital. You had, we've had a digital magazine. I kind of just ignored it. Thank God I had it, you know, and I had it for a long time. And I had a lot of content on there that I didn't even realize. And um, so we went digital. I did a very, very small press run just to keep my advertisers or people that were on there. But I'm telling you that, you know, I, so many people had the best years over the last couple of years because A, they learn that they, that, you know, pivot, everybody uses that word. I try not to because I've just heard it so much that, but the people that, you know, basically, uh, uh, you know, put their foot in the ground and, and, you know, you know, change directions and they could, you know, change their course, but maintain their company culture and learn that they, you know, if, they, if their workforce or their salespeople, you know, where they'd be in the office, they were allowed to work at home, they could prove themselves. There, there wasn't any of the chatter at the at the water cooler or the you know the caught whatever the break room and in construction so many people told me i had the best years over the last couple of years because a we, we learned about our company we learned how to do new things business i trusted my people more if i could have hired more uh, 
uh, project managers or superintendents, I could have taken off. I could have done more business, but I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew. Because in in commercial construction, if you don't, everything's all in the opening of the store. So you know the circulars are printed, the opening of the store, and then they back it up and they build their construction schedule. And uh, you know me, we used to have keynotes, and you know, I mean, we threw some killer, killer events. You know, over the years, and uh, I did a really good one here in Clearwater. I did uh, one at the Hyatt right there by the Tampa Airport. That's kind of alone by itself there, and uh, they had sure. just renovated it. Yeah, and uh, we went. We took everybody out fishing in Clearwater, and uh, we did a casino night. I'm trying to think about, it, but that was an awesome event. And uh, but I had to go the digital route just like you, so I went digital. And uh, I try, I did some virtual events and, uh, you know, it was a learning thing. And then I went, you know, this past year I did, uh, last year I did a couple of hybrid events and, but I took digital classes over the last year and a half. And I, and I hooked up with a couple of influencers and I thought I knew a lot. I didn't know Jack, you know, TikTok, YouTube, auto response. I mean, all this stuff. And I just, I kind of took a, a hiatus and learned all this stuff and then I implemented it. And now, uh, you know, I, I I can clip, I can cut, uh, you know, I know mid -journey. I mean, I, I know all this stuff. I launched my own agency. So now I'm kind of, I'm so weird because I'm a publisher, but I see everybody sending me press releases and whatever. And I'm just like, how much do you pay your business development person, your marketing? Because is this all you do? Because there's so, I'm, I could run circles around the amount of money. And I I asked that same question that you asked. Hey, if you're building one, you know, you're building a store, what's your profit margin? Forty thousand dollars, hundred, whatever it might be, you know, because you know, you have, you know, big box versus a small restaurant, but you make X amount of dollars on your profit margin. What if I brought in like one or two of those a year for you or or helped you get those? What if I could bring in five to ten? Would that be advantageous for you? And so these are the conversations and, and a lot of PR firms that I talk to, I ask them flat out, do you do any of this stuff? And and I and they say no. I said, look, you should hire me because you'll you'll be able to bring more value to your customer. But if you don't do it, I'm going to ask them outright because I'm helping you. But I know I can. They they need to know this stuff. And they can either try to learn on themselves, like it took me a year and a half to learn all that stuff. But it's there. And technology and being online, things are just at warp speed. I mean, everything you learned six months ago is probably already outdated and they're, you know, especially with AI and it's just changing everything. And uh, well, that, well, that's a that's another topic, right? Because what happened three or four years ago with, you know, everything getting shut down, we're now going through another transition and we were we're midst of that transition now with AI. Right. So it's like, hey, everything I know to be true. Now I have to operate differently. I have to make a transition. Right. And then another now with AI coming into the mix, you know, with just SDRs, like people, because I, I started off in, in, in the, like reaching out and doing sales for companies too, like back in the day, like cold calls, like, well, now you got AI that can mimic your, my voice. I can tell it what it wants and then it can just actually make the calls for me. It can actually sound like me where it can rebuttal probably better than me as well. How can we take this technology and equip it to everything that we're doing now? And then on top of that too, another thing, that people need to focus on too is like, who is their target audience? Because if you're serving the affluent, there's a really good book called How to Market to the Affluent by Dan Kennedy. Uh, kind of hard to find and some people will charge like 100, 200 bucks for it on eBay and stuff. But the whole gist of that book is affluent buyers, they buy specifically. Like, you know, during the last three or four years, they're still affluent people. You know, there's still people in the NBA. There's people all around the world that are wealthy and successful celebrities, you know, regardless of what the economy is. Usually when there's a downturn in the economy, it's the middle class that kind of gets squeezed out, right? And then also you have the lower poverty where those individuals are still going to make their own, their same purchases too, whether it's a good economy or a bad economy as well. So businesses really need to look at what is their value proposition how are they compared to other individuals in the marketplace number one and number two is who is their audience what problem are they solving and how is that solution providing uh, or how is that solution that they're providing fixing that problem because if they're serving the affluent market that affluent market is always going to be there and they're in fact a lot of them you know they they want to spend they, like they they they're looking for ways to create more excitement, create more fulfillment, make more money, 
So again, getting clear with what your value proposition and who you're serving is also going to help people clear with what to leverage and what to do, especially with AI and all the things that are coming out now and that are currently out as well. Yeah, like I said, I, uh, you know, I, um, you know, when I told my wife, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this online class, you know, and she's like, what are you doing that for? You know, so I spent a weekend, <laughs> I, I saw this guy, I found him on Facebook, I'm scrolling, you know, and I, oh, you know, I'll do it. Spent the weekend, got my online thing, and then I took another class, and then I took in more, and then I joined this mastermind, and I met, you know, and listen, it's, you never know what, what connections are going to happen and where they're going to come. And uh, so I, I hooked up with some of these dudes, and um, I just I just learned so much. But uh, I'm a completely different business than I was three or four years ago. I mean, I was print face to face. People knew me. But now, like, I don't miss the printer right now. I don't miss the post office. I'm digital. If anything happens, I can swap it out. If there's a typo or something, listen, I'm a, we look at stuff thousands of times before we post something. And then, boom, someone will say, hey, I had a typo there. Yeah, we can fix it in two seconds, you know? And uh, it's, it, and, and no one's perfect. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. I mean, look, you know, we try to proof and whatever, and uh, we have plenty of eyes on it, but you're, you know, you can look at something a thousand times. Or you can, as an athlete, you can look at tape and you know, the guy's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, you know, do the back door on you. You've seen it a million times, but then until you see it live, then you, it actually, you know, it comprehends it. And uh, so uh, making the transition from print face to face to digital, it, it, it's been an amazing transformation. And uh, like I said, I would have never even thought about having, you know, my own agency and, you know, try, and I'm more like, hey, look, it's a win win. If I can help you, you help me. And, you know, maybe you'll spend, you know, maybe invest a little more money, you know, for the other things that I that I didn't offer before. But now I do. And uh, I could probably turn, you know, connections. It's all in, in, you. You are your own brand. And um, yeah, it's just like this podcast. I had just bought my mic. I was going to do these in by uh, uh, these. Uh, you know, I was going to interview people on the construction site and then everything got shut down. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll just do one of these a week. And uh, I had a YouTube channel. I had all my videos from all my events and stuff. I just ignored it. Now I, you know, I'm, I'm building that up and I'm not, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. So, so like this year I'm running every day, five to six miles. So I'm running at the end of January. I was like, I was, I do this cool off, cool off, uh, my wife doesn't like me coming and sweating in the house, you know, so I cool off up by the pickleball court and uh, I was like, OK, I'll just, I, I, I should just do a little video. So now I do a video every day. Like when we're done, I'm going to go out and do my five or six miles. And at the end, I'll figure out a, a, my positive thought of the day and I'm going to throw it at him, you know, before, and uh, it's it's been amazing. I post these things and then after a couple of days, people are looking, they're leaving comments. And for all you out there, I appreciate you all. You know, I could have never done that. I would never I never had. A million people hit my website. I have three over three million people a month that, that consume content. I would have never ever thought about that. You know, I think now I'm like, shoot, you got to think big. You got to dream big. You got to think about stuff. So now I'm like, I, I told my web guys, like, look, man, we should have 10 million people a month hitting our website. We there's there's so much out there, and uh, uh, so I wake up every day early. You know, make my bed. Positive attitude. I don't have time for negativity. If it, you know, don't surround yourself with negative people and uh, give it your all. And as an athlete, I love talking to athletes all the time because they understand winning and losing. They have thick skin and they know that, you know, you're, once you get, a, you know, your athletic career is over, you're prepared because out in the business world, it is brutal, much brutal than someone giving, a, you know, you know, an elbow you know, as a basketball. If you're driving or, you know, I'm going to cross some guys trying to clothesline you, you know, when you're looking at the pet, you know, your head's behind you, it's, it's on a swivel, but it's not on a swivel where it should be. And uh, so if you're prepared to go out there and do battle and you've done already on the athletic field, making the transition to the business world is, is an unbelievable thing. If you can apply win and lose and everything that you've done previously in your life, you're going to be that much more prepared. And anybody that went through the last three or four years and is still standing today and more profitable, kudos to you because, you know, it wasn't easy. You know, and I know that there were some scary nights uh, for those of you out there, because I know I went through them that month of April in 2020. Man, that was a scare. When I went digital, I was scared to death, you know, but you got you can't be scared of fear. You got to take fear head on. You know, it's like getting bucked off the horse. You can't just go. Oh, I'm not going to get on. No, you brush yourself off. You put your boot you get on that saddle. Giddy up.
and go forward. Absolutely. Yeah, because you know what that is, man? It's like, you know, we all have comfort zones, right? So if you think of it like a circle, it, you know, anytime you, you feel fear or there's uncertainty, right when you try to step outside that comfort zone, you're going to start to feel that maybe a little bit of stress, anxiety, there's uncertainty because this is uncharted land, right? Uncharted water. Like, I've never been out here before. I've never done this before. But usually what I've noticed in, in my life, in my experience is when I start to feel like that, I'm usually heading in the right direction because usually when you start to feel that, that means you're stepping outside of your comfort zone and you're going to grow and you're going to become more. And then, you know, you looking back at it, you're like, man, I should have went digital, you know, 10 years ago, you know, on Facebook camp or whatever. When, you know, I, I should have went digital a lot sooner than I did. Right. And it's the same thing with anything. Anytime, like when you were starting the podcast, like, hey, I don't know what equipment to buy. I don't even know what what i'm doing really but i'm just gonna do it even though i'm kind of nervous a little bit about it uh, creating content online direct the camera stuff like it's that same feeling of like eh, what the heck am i doing i'm not that good at it should i even be doing this i'm kind of scared it gives me a little bit of anxiety kind of stresses me out a little bit well good because that means you're stepping outside your comfort zone you're going to grow and you're going to then determine and decipher hey like after a while is this really moving the deal for my business and, and getting clear on what those things are? And then once you find those certain things that are moving the needle for your business, then you need to double down on it and be grateful for that. Because again, anything can happen. Anything can change within the industry, within the market, within the business. So when you do tap into something that's working extremely well, driving traffic, generating leads, building, uh, generating revenue, double down on that because, you know, all, all good things eventually come to an end. We're, we're oh, all gonna yeah. die. We're all gonna, and so, and so we can't take it with us. But we have to be grateful and appreciative of the good times and really maximize those moments because anything can change and anything can shift. You know, I once you know when I do my podcast, I look back. I was awful. I mean, my first, you know, I, I mean, didn't have a good background and. Uh, I just, I, I laugh, but you know what? I was laughing. People weren't laughing at me. They were laughing with me, you know? So I kind of didn't, I wasn't fearful, but I was kind of forced into it. I didn't ask for the, I didn't ask for uh, the roller coaster to start. I just kind of was happy where I was at. But as I look back, I don't miss the post office. I don't miss the printer. Uh, you know, I love, I miss seeing my buds and I still, I do still do a, a cocktail party once a month. I'm going up to Chicago in a couple of weeks. I was just up in Charlotte and, uh, so I, I still do that. And I like seeing my, my, my peeps, but uh, where I'm at now, you know, I'm 60 years old and, uh, you know, I can still go out and do five or six miles. And it, it, you know, I but I still learn every day. I make mistakes. I'm not ashamed to say it. I don't know everything. And if you're not feeling pain, you're not growing. That's just the reality of it, because you're you, you know, you, you got to. You just have to give it your all and be able to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the night and say, hey, I left it all out on the field. Even when you couldn't be about Mount Union, you could go back and say, hey, man, I, I did what we could. We didn't, you know, it, it's tough beating a team, you know. But then after, you you know, you beat them, it's like Mount Union. Every team that they probably played was always one to knock them off because they were great. I wouldn't I wouldn't want that pressure on me. But every team that, you know, you win a championship, every time you play someone, they, they just up their game because they want to knock you off. And that's the way business is. Everybody wants to knock you off, you know? And uh, so, uh, so Tyler, if someone was out there and they wanted to maybe book you for, a, you know, a speaking engagement or, or bounce some things off you or what, how would someone reach out to you? Cause I, I, I met you through LinkedIn. You reached out to me. So how would, how would yeah. they, they communicate with you? Would LinkedIn yeah, be LinkedIn. Like yeah, LinkedIn is uh, LinkedIn was one of the first platforms I've had the most like uh, I, I got on and had most success on it uh, personally and professionally and also Instagram. So if you just type in Tyler Cerny, my LinkedIn, my Instagram, you can connect with me there. I have a website that you can get connected with you too. But yeah, Instagram, LinkedIn, my personal website, and then uh, if you type me in, you'll, uh, my text stock will pop up on YouTube as well. So uh, I'm always here to serve and help people because at the end of the day. You know, what you're talking about, too, and kind of the last thing I wanted to mention as well is like, what is our identity, right? Because if our identity is a bad podcaster or a bad whatever, or we're going to get those bad results, right? But if I step into the identity of a top-ranked podcaster and I start to believe that, 
then I'm going to start to think differently and I'm going to start to act differently, which then is going to give me and dictate different results for myself and for my life. And so if we can step into a positive identity, then we can think differently, act differently, and then ultimately get different results. And so, but yeah, connect with me on Instagram. I'm active there. I post pretty often there. Post often on, on, on LinkedIn. Those are the best two channels. And I look forward to connecting with people there. Well, listen, if it, it, so if you're out there, LinkedIn, Tyler's Allen there. And uh, if uh, if you can't find him, you know, message me, email me, what have you. And, and listen, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, you can get me at David C at CCR mag.com. Uh, listen, Tyler got me on LinkedIn. People that get on these podcasts, they send me a press release. I like the story, whatever it might be. And I have all sorts of people that are on here. I just don't do have construction people. And, uh, uh, that's how you get on here. You know, if you, if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you can't win. If you don't send me something, I can't, you know, I can't look at, it, I can't post it up on the website. Uh, very tough to get in the magazine, but you know, you got to send me something so I can look at it. You, you let us judge it. And we post all day long. My TAT, my turnaround time, it's probably 24, 48 hours. I answer all my emails. My digital specialist will send it to you. We want you to share it. It's good for our SEO, which is your search engine optimization. That's how Google finds you. And uh, uh, it's a win-win. And uh, and like I said, before I used to just put construction stuff, stuff up there. But now I've, I've learned that, hey, it's not all work. You got to have, you know, a, a work-life kind of balance. So you'll find all sorts of stuff that I that I post up on the website. You know, how to buy the right phone. You know, what are the best tires to put on your truck? Whatever it might be. I mean, the bulk of it's construction. But I put some other stuff on there. I've diversified. And uh, so, uh, you know, let us judge it. And, uh, you know, so, um, well, with that, do you want to leave a pot? I mean, if that was your positive thought, was that your positive thought here, or do you want to leave another one before before we sign off? Yeah, I mean, the one thing I, I will mention is, you know, one of the things that also changed my life, and I know we talked about business here, was also um, the Lord. As a faith-based entrepreneur, that every all the success that I've had in my life is because of the creator of the universe. and. The, the closer you can get with the career of the universe, the, the, the more success you're going to have. And the, the analogy I always tell people, I just spoke at a university in Southern California. And I said, how many of you drive a car? And everyone raises their hand, right? And I said, how many of you have read that driver's manual? And, you know, there's like one or two gearheads in the audience, but no one's, no one's read that. And I'm like, yeah, you know that thick book that's in the glove department, that one? And people are like, yeah, I haven't read it. Well. The person that created that car, right, had an intention and a reason behind every single part of that vehicle, right? And there are certain things that we need to be doing every single day, every single week, every single month um, and year to make sure that car runs efficiently and effectively. Because what happens is, let's say I don't read the manual and I say, you know what, based off what I feel like it and based off my emotions and based on what I think to be true, I'm going to put, you know, 87 gasoline in that vehicle because that's what I want to do. Well, it's out of alignment with the creator's purpose for that specific creation. What's going to happen? It's not going to run efficiently. Where, and what if I'm like a little kid and I put, want to put juice or milk in there? It's still, uh, it's obviously not going to run either. So what if I just understood the creator, the reason and the intention behind every specific aspect of that creation? Then from there, I can be able to maximize the use and the efficiency of that creation. And it's the same thing with our life. We've been handcrafted, hand designed by the creator of the universe. And I, I say the creator and I leave it open for interpretation. But if you're fit, but if you do believe in God and the Lord, then the Bible is that written manual. So if someone's struggling financially, they're struggling in their relationships, they're struggling to be happy. That's the manual of life. Everything that people need to know, if they are looking for questions, they're going through a transition, they're going through a pivot, is in that Bible. And you can find it. And once you kind of get close to that, then you realize, wow, these are some skill sets. These are things that make me who I am. And then there are certain things that I'm here called to do on this earth. And once I step into that, then you have authority. And authority, the best thing I like to share it is, you know, I was driving and there's a Tra uh, police officers on the road. He's directing traffic while I'm in a car. Me and my car has more have more power than that police officer on that road. However, 
I ended up stopping and listening to, to the police officer. Why? Because he has more authority. So when you are able to step more, step into that authority, you can then dictate and influence certain situations in life. And you're, everyone has a story, everyone has a skill set, and everyone has a reason why they are designed the way that they are designed. Figure that out, tap into that, share it, maximize it. Then you can come from a place of authority. No one else can take that away from you. And you know that's how me and you got connected, David, because that's what you do every single day as well. And you come from a place of authority because you're just genuinely and authentically you and yourself. And that's what I do and strive to do every single day. And you meet some cool people, you have some fun, and then you just keep keep it rolling, man. Yeah. Hey, listen, that was awesome. I uh, uh, I, I I told you know, listen, I'm not a nice Jewish boy, and I'm reading the Bible. You know, still haven't finished it. I just finished the Book of Psalms. Jesus hasn't been born yet. I read a couple of pages every day, and you know, I, I you know, hopefully, I'll maybe be able to get through the whole thing this year. But if not, that's okay. You know. Uh, Right. Uh, you know, it, it's a uh, it's an incredible book. It's an incredible story. And, uh, uh, you know, my thought I'm going to leave with you is, look, if you don't have a winning attitude, you're not going to win. OK, you got you, you just got to have that winning attitude every morning. You, and you got to be consistent. You got to do it every day. Don't let don't surround yourself with those poo pooers. OK, and right. that, that's the that's the way I'm going to leave it. So before we sign up, a couple things. If you're on the construction site, we want you to be safe. Once you get home, have dinner with your wife, your husband, your partner, your kids, your dog, your turtle, whatever you got at home. Get a good sleep and get be able to go to work the next day. Number two, the athlete, me, drink water, put some electrolytes in there, stay hydrated. It's getting hot down here in the south. We want you to, you know, listen, as an athlete, you get hydrated, you get headaches, you, you, you get hurt, uh, you don't play well. Same thing with work. Stay hydrated. I don't care if you're in an office, if you're in a construction site, whatever you're doing, stay hydrated. Drink this stuff. Put some electrolytes. You, you, you'll just feel better and you'll sleep so much better. Lastly, hit the like button. We want to get this episode out there on uh, the YouTube al algorithms so we can hear Tyler's story. And uh, that's all I'm going to ask you for. And uh, hey, if you want to leave me a nice little comment, I'll take that too. You know. So uh, with that said, Tyler, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for reaching out to me on LinkedIn. And uh, say goodbye from Orlando. See you guys. Cheers. Thank you for having me on the show. I will continue to stay caffeinated and go Cleveland Cavaliers. Give a shout out to my, my beautiful wife and the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Go Cavs. And I'm going to sign off from uh, Sugar Hill just below the Buford Dam uh, on Lake Lanier, about uh, 25 miles north of downtown ATL. And uh, Everybody, uh, have a great rest of the TGIF, great weekend, enjoy yourself, relax, clear your mindset, and get ready for another fantastic week next week. And for all you Pioneer fans out there, go Piles, let's beat Marquette tonight and win the Big East and, uh, you know, and uh, go into tourney uh, with momentum. Tyler, I look forward to meeting you in, in, in person, okay? Yes, sir, man. Have a great weekend. We'll talk soon. All right, man. Cheers. Cheers, Thank everybody. You, See you later in the next episode. Bye. Thank you, guys. Really?